Hello all, this is chapter 1. We talk about atoms. About ch in, a, in a chapter 1, we talk about atoms. So, uh, here we start with the um, atomic structure. First, we see what is matter, how the matter composed of, matter composed of like subatomic particles. And in chemistry, what we do, we try to understand matter. If you look around, everything we see around us is matter. Matter is anything that has a space and mass. So, um, if you think about air, that is matter. If you think about your computer, that is matter. So, he, at the big, very beginning, we try to classify this matter. Matter can classify according to mainly two ways. According to its state, according to its composition. Matter can be in three um, states. Matter can be solid, liquid, or gas. So three states. Also, matter can classify it according to composition. Uh, so these are some properties of solid matter, liquid matter, and the gaseous matter. And then, uh, whenever you think about um, composition, this is how uh, the matter can classify it according to the composition. Matter can be a pure substance, pure substance or a mixture. If it is pure substance means, like example, pure substance can be an element. How do you know what is element? You, I'm pretty sure you heard about periodic table of the elements. Think about a pure gold jewelry. That is a P element. Uh, think about helium balloon. That is element. And then what is this pure substance? Pure water. Tap water is not pure because it, it has added ingredient. But if you think about pure water, just H2O, just oxygen, carbon dioxide, that can be a pure substance and a compound. Mixtures can be two types. Homogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture is uniform composition throughout like see here you see sweet tea something else i would say you mix um sugar water salt water it can be a homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture you mix you can mix um sand and water right so that is heterogeneous mixture if you think about um examples around us heterogeneous mixture would be a chicken soup um, rocky road ice cream but if you think about vanilla ice cream it's a homogeneous mixture some other examples air around us is the homogeneous mixture blood because it's it's a homogeneous because you don't see you can't separate okay um okay in blood okay this is water this is red no it's everything uniform composition so we call that as homogeneous mixture so this is one we are finishing one main concept which is we talk about what is matter and how we classify matter according to pure substance and a mixture so pure substance can be element and a compound mixture can be heterogeneous homogeneous mixture and then we are going to the um, next section okay in the next part of the chapter we're gonna uh, talk about the um, of scientific method. So, a uh, scientific method is how we look at a question as a scientist. If there's anything, how we solve it as, in as a scientific way. Before I'm explaining the scientific method, let me give you a simple example. You go to a friend's place, and then um. You start sneezing and you saw a cat. How do you uh, make according to the side? How do you solve this according to the scientific method? So always scientific method has four key characteristics. Observation, formulation of hypothesis, you see observation, formulation of hypothesis, experimentation, formulation of, sorry about that, formulation of laws, laws and Theories, so it's here. So, what is observation? Your observation for this scenario is you go to your friend's place and then um, you saw a cat and you start sneezing. 
What is your hypothesis? Is you are allergic to cats. How do you do the experimentation? Experimentation is you go to the friend's place um, and then um, like you go to another friend's place with no cats and then you see um, you still sneeze, right? So with the cat, you allergy, you show allergic reaction, no cat, without cat, you shouldn't show, so like that, okay? So control experiment and experimentation. And then if you go to the um, another friend's place with no cats and you st still sneeze, it's not, you're not, a, you're not allergic to cats, it's something else. So like that, so then you can formulate, okay, lows always, low is uh, the first one and theories are more advanced. So many lows, so many high observations and experimentation um, develop theories. So this is the scientific method. Always observation, hypothesis, experimentation, and then from these, you formulate laws and theories. Scientific method will never be biased. Okay, so this shows that. Um, and then uh, we, in the chemistry, we talk about a lot of theories and laws very first law we are learning is law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass. Lavoisier is a scientist who came up with the conservation of mass. It says, in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So this is the law of conservation of mass. Um, that means always mass is mass remains same. If not created nor destroyed, it transferred to another type of element. Nothing created nor destroyed. Um, theory. Theory is like Dalton's atomic theory, Big Bang theory. It, it is well-established hypothesis. Um, so the, it's not 100% like, you know, accurate, but it's very accurate. So it's, it's validated with a lot of laws, a lot of experimentation. So the law theory is a little advanced than law. So um, which statement best explain difference between law and theory? Law is the truth? No. Well, law, uh, law summarizes a series of related observations while a theory gives underlying reason. It seems good to me. Right. So that is the end of the other section, which is the scientific method. After scientific method, we are going to the scientific measurements. There are two types of measurements, qualitative, uh, quantitative. Qualitative means no, no number. Like you think, okay, it's a, you see, okay, you saw a lot, two types of, um, groups of um, eminems, you see, oh, this is a bigger group of eminems, this is like small amount of eminems, like qualitative, you think about color, you think about shape, but quantitative is more uh, accurate. You say, okay, number, I see 100 grams of eminems, I see 150 grams of eminems. So it always, um, for the quantitative uh, measurements, you need um, equipments. In chemistry, you, you know, when you do that in uh, lab, in, at home, you see, you measure a lot of things. You have glassware, you need balances, temp, tem, like temperature thermometers, like that. And then these uh, measurements, you have two types of systems, English system, metric system. So the English system, they use inch, feet. Right? So if we look at the um, little bit of um, the unit. In, um, so that's the units. And then, okay. So these are the some units. So after units, I'm moving to um, some uh, theories and uh, like, you know, how, how these building blocks, how they talk about like early, like kind of a history lesson. So um, how these uh, early scientists work on these um, atoms. So it goes to the around 50th century People are very curious, right? They want to know how these things made out of everything. The answer is chemistry. So um, Pluto, Pla sort of Plato and Aristotle, they had that. Um, they 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 held the matter has no smallest parts. They proposed that different substances were composed of um, various portions. So 
very old ideas. And then the recent findings, John Dalton, Dalton's atomic theory. Still, um, the, we, we, we go with the Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory based on these three laws. Dalton's atomic theory is the very top advanced, but in, the, in order to make the theory, Dalton's atomic theory, we use law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportions, law of multiple proportions. These three laws are very important in order to developing the, when the Dalton developed this theory. We already know what is law of conservation of mass. We discussed matter neither created nor destroyed. And then um, I want to show you before we go here, law of conservation of mass we discussed. And then um, law of definite proportions. What is this law of definite proportion? All samples of a given compound, regardless of their source, how they were prepared, have same number of proportions of their constituent elements. So example, regardless of source, water is H2O. You take water from Texas, where which I live, which I live in Texas. You take water in Oklahoma. You take water in some other space. Water is H2O. Always has two hydrogen, one oxygen. So that is the law of definite proportion. Let's go to the, um, so this is some example about law of definite proportion. I'll explain you slowly. The decomposition of 18 grams of water results in 16 grams of oxygen and 2 grams of hydrogen. Um, so always rate of oxygen to hydrogen ratio is uh, 8 to 1, right? 8 to, 8 to 1 when you like in 2, 8 to 1. So that's always, that is the ratio. It, does, it doesn't have give any other ratio. So that is the law of definite proportion. So I have some questions on um, definite proportion. So by using definite proportion, you can identify, okay, this is the same element or different. If it is the same element, the ratio between the elements in the compound should be the same. Okay. So two samples of carbon dioxide decompose into their constituent elements. One sample gives up CO2, right? So carbon to O. One sample produces 25.6 oxygen and 9.6. So show the result consists of always. You, when you divide, if it is a given same ratio between constituent elements at the same number. Same compound, sorry. Multiple proportions. Multiple proportion, let me read the uh, law. When two elements called in A and B form two different compounds, the masses of element B that combine with one gram of element A can be expressed as the ratio of small whole numbers. What is that? Two elements combine and form more than one compound? What is that? Can you think about day-to-day -day example? So what are the two elements? Let's take carbon and oxygen. CO2, carbon dioxide. CO, carbon monoxide. That is the one good example for law of multiple proportion. Think about water, H2O, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Two elements combine for more than one compound. So you see the law of multiple proportions. So when two elements combine for more than one um, compound, that, those, that's the example. Always they say, uh, so when you combine mass of element B, always combining with mass of element 1 is proportion of whole numbers. So it's going to be 1 to 2, 1 to 3, like that. Okay. So let's look, look at this question. Um, carbon monoxide um, and carbon dioxide are two compounds composed of same two elements. So you see mass ratio of oxygen to carbon in carbon dioxide is 2.67 to 1. Uh, but in uh, carbon monoxide, it's basically the half, so which is 1.33 to 1. So the if you think about mass of oxygen, one got, it's like basically 2, right? CO2. So that is the law of multiple proportions. So you know now that what are the three laws? Law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportions, law of multiple proportions. 
We use these three laws to develop Dalton's atomic theory, which is here in your notes. Okay. So this is the Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory is very important. We still go with the Dalton's atomic theory. It has four main postulates. Let me read it one by one for you. First one, each element is composed of tiny indestructible particles called atom. Every element made out of atoms. All elements in a given at all atoms in a given element are same, but um, the the atoms in another different element is different. Example, atoms in an oxygen is different than atoms in hydrogen. Atoms combine in a simple whole number ratios to form compounds H2O, whole numbers, right? Two hydrogen, one oxygen. Elements, sorry, atoms of one element cannot change into atoms of another element. Never oxygen goes to hydrogen. But in chemical reaction, atoms can change only the way they bound together. But in, the, in a chemical reaction, like um, sodium chloride formation, they can combine, they can form, okay, then come to chemical bond. So this is the Dalton's atomic theory, another very important um, aspect. Okay.